Next, from the state capitol, we speak with Valerie Harris, an adult education specialist, about the resources available to help those who wish to get a degree in higher education but do not currently meet the educational requirements for admission. This runs about eight minutes. Valerie Harris, Director of Adult Education at Lewis and Clark Community College in the Alton Godfrey area, thank you for joining us on the online channel. Thank you for having me. We wanted to talk to you because you're also with a organization that I think a lot of people may not be aware of. It's pronounced IASA, which stands for what? Well, it's we've moved from, we're kind of like doing the IBM thing, where we've left that name and we're just kind of calling ourselves Voice of Adult Education. So. Um, it's that's that's our, our and what what is the main purpose of the organization we represent um, and advocate for pr practitioners in adult education and literacy programs across the state and it's actually I was going to say it's actually across the state so the question is uh, you're try or the, the mission as I understand it is you're trying to get those who maybe have not finished their high school degree or perhaps did get a high school degree or a GED and trying to see if they have an interest in going into higher education to help facilitate them. Why, why would those individuals need help? Why can't they just go out on their own accord and enroll in a community college or whatever they choose to enroll in? Well, some maybe could, but many of our students, just like a lot of high school students, uh, still need some skills improvement. They, and a lot of them have been out for a while, they're rusty, so we really um, work on those basic reading, writing, and math skills and get them prepared. You, a lot of times for a GED test, or sometimes we work with um, people for whom English is not their first language, so they need, they need support in, in learning those English skills. And, um, and we try to, to help them get to the resources that they need to be able to, to go on to the next step. And we hope for college. Sometimes it's work. You know, it could be other kinds of training as well. So. And if they need financial aid, do you help them go through that paperwork as well? We can, yes. We can uh, support them through that because it's a pretty complicated process. I don't know if you've ever been through financial aid, uh, filling out the applications and all of that, needing all the paperwork. So we that's kind of new for us we used to just really focus in on those basic skills but now we realize students need support on on through their next step as well so now we started off mentioning that you work through Lewis and Clark Community College in your we we'll say your day job and your work with IASA is more of a uh, affiliated uh, work effort do you also work does IASA also work with four-year schools and help that or is it really tied more uh, initially to the community college level um, it, it would it's whatever the students goals are you know and and primarily they tend to gravitate toward the community college but but it absolutely could be towards a four-year degree but we you know we were governed through the community college board so we're you know a little um, motivated in that direction for that reason if someone is interested said you know I've been thinking about it well before I even go there what 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 are some of the hang-ups why people that you found don't go to seek a higher degree in education is it just inertia that are they intimidated by the process and uh, tell me that and then to what extent you overcome any of those uh, factors that inhibit them um, that's a good question you know we've been trying to answer that question as well and I mean I of course I'm just off the cuff here but I think the number one hang-up is our perception of themselves as as college material I mean a lot of our students don't see themselves as a college student so we need to really work with them they don't understand you know what what they need to get to that bigger goal that they're uh, that job or career that they're wanting you know and a lot of them have they have issues of poverty they have you know they're single parents, they don't have transportation, they have a lot of barriers that just get in the way. And so sometimes it's just a matter of helping them see through those barriers and see themselves succeeding. And actually, you know, getting a GED is a great step in that direction. They, you know, they realize they can do, they can reach their own goals and they can be successful. So, it's, so, um, I'm, a lot, I'm a lot of that. times it might just be, uh, as you say, self-perception and, and to the extent that the process can be made easier, right. 
uh, you help make that happen. For those who are interested in finding out more, uh, first of all, is there a cost associated for those wanting to go through uh, your program? Um, our programs do not cost, other than time and commitment, which is a big one. Um, and it, uh, the GED test itself has a fee, and then of course college, you know, costs. But we we're part of them getting to that secondary level of education. So. How many people generally have? Or do you have any numbers on how many people avail themselves of this service? Well, our state last year served over 122,000, and there are supposedly 1.8 million out there that that need our services, and then another 2.4 million that don't have um, that for whom English isn't their first language. So there's great need that we're not meeting, but you know we did serve over 122,000 last year. And I know uh, actually something that surprised me some years ago when I learned that uh, there's something like 40,000 people drop out of high school every year across the state of Illinois. I know. Today, um, Dr. Uh, Karen Hunter Anderson, who's our, I don't know, she's a, high, a higher up person at ICCB, said 150 people drop out of high school every day. And I think that was Illinois, and that's just amazing to me. But so it's not going away. And if someone wants to get more information about this, and again, while you're from the Godfrey Alton area, they don't have to. You, you, this service would be available to them across the state. Is that correct? Correct. And I'm, I'm trying to think of. We have an 800 number, but. Um, is there a website that we could there, put on? There is a website. It's, it would be www.iccb.org, um, and then they would go to adult education. And there'd be a better website than that if I if I could look a minute I could find it that would go directly to you know there, there's a um, a provider locator that someone could put their zip code in and find a program by them so that is available that would be the best thing I think great well maybe we can get that graphic up while we have this interview air and we appreciate you for joining us thank you so much you're watching the Illinois Channel an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.